Hello everyone, welcome to our Becoming Your Mom support group. Uh, we have some visitors with us today, welcome to you. My name is Mark and I'm the group leader. And I think we'll start by reciting our mission statement. We love our moms, but we are not our moms. We love our moms, but we are not our moms. Carol, would you mind starting us off this week? Hi everyone, I'm Carol. Hi Carol. I am the oldest of three roommates and I'm turning into my mom. I clean up everything after them. I've even started doing their laundry. I talk to myself in the grocery store all the time. All of my status updates are just pictures of kids. I don't even have kids. Same, well, kids and recipes. The other day, I almost licked my finger and wiped the face of a total stranger. I keep saying words like garbage and tarje. What is that? I'll send a text to someone just to let them know I sent them an email. Well, how else would they know? Right? I mean, these shoes were on sale. What am I supposed to do, not buy them? I call my husband my son's name, and sometimes I call my son the dog's name. I always tell people, I'll be like two minutes, then it'll be like an hour. <laughs> whoa, whoa, take it easy there. Shannon already has a tissue. We really don't need to offer her one. I do. Did you see how they let the momness overtake them? So you may not be able to avoid becoming your mom, but the key is to let the beautiful things about moms shine through in your life. The kindness, the caring, the compassion, the qualities that God gave moms when he created them. Oh, like when I text my friends, LOL, lots of love. That's not what LOL means. That's what my son told me it meant. LOL, lots of love. What else, what else would it mean? You know, I used to be an amazing dancer. Now when I dance, people just get embarrassed. Can I show you? Yeah. Oh, no, Carol. Oh, Carol, sit oh, down. It's oh, not bad. Carol, please. One, two. Oh, that's a great video. A great video. I want to wish every mother a happy Mother's Day today. And let's take a moment for all the moms out there. Will you please stand? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's important that we acknowledge you and we thank you for, for people that have been moms throughout the years, also moms to people that may have been unfortunate enough not to have a mom in their life, and uh, we appreciate everything you've done. So happy Mother's Day. Will you please stand and sing with us, Joy of the Lord. strength the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord is my strength the joy of the lord is my strength he heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more he heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more he heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet wine, send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Come into his 
his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give his raise your voice is raised give glory and honor and power unto him Jesus the name above all names come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart is raised, your voice is raised, give glory and honor and power unto him, Jesus, the name above all names. Father, we give you so much thanks and all the glory this morning, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity once again that we can come together and gather into your house, into this room, and pray as a family together. We ask that your Holy Spirit continue to fill this room, continue to speak to us today, Lord. Whether it's with music or the spoken word, you have a plan and you have a, a, a message for each one of us. So allow us to clear all the junk out. Allow us to clear all the stuff that's that's jumbled us up this week, that we can sit still and be patient enough to hear, to hear your plan. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Special announcements for the family. In two weeks, on the 22nd of May, we are going to have a reception following church in the gym to honor... Jay and Lisa, as Jay will end his employment with the church. So it's just come right after church, join us in the gym, and we look forward to everybody coming and sharing hugs and kisses and cards and whatever. Okay? Thank you. Thanks. Do I get to come to that? No. All right, Lisa, it looks like you're on your own, so... Oh, thank you for that. That's, that's nice, Barb. Um, I want to just make a few announcements as well that Wednesday we will have the Romeo Club. Do you know that it was years before I knew what Romeo stood for? Did you know that? Does everybody know what Romeo stands for? <laughs> I don't think it's really old men, but re re retired old men eating out. Romeoville High School, that doesn't count, Juanita. That's close, but not good enough. Um, prayer meeting on Thursday as well at 10.30. 6, 6 will be the Hebrew study, and 7 p.m. will be a prayer meeting. I also want to make a special note here to put on your agenda for Thursday. Thursday is actually Nurses' Day, and I think we all know what the nurses have been through in this last couple of years and continue to go through. Spent a lot of time in the hospital this last week, um, and saw the stress and, and the things that they are going through and, and understaffed, and we can't thank them enough. And, and I think we also need to, uh, to lift them up on Thursday, not just Thursday, but every day of everything that they go through and appreciate what they do. And uh, it's nice that we have a special day, but I think every day we need to give them thanks as well. 
those are all the announcements that I have at this time. I would love for the children to come forward for the children's time. Morning. Are you awake? No. Why not? Did you stay up too late? No. Well, good morning. I got a question to ask you. Have you ever heard of a warranty? Do you know what a warranty is? No? Never heard of warranty before? What if I took this phone and I broke it and it broke? Sometimes we have a warranty for things like that. Or if I have a refrigerator and it breaks, I can get a new one because I have a warranty. I bought a warranty or it came with a warranty. You ever heard that before now? That make, no, 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 I haven't heard it. Not at all. Well, now you have. That's called a warranty. So here's the thing I want to talk about, though. We have a warranty. We have a guarantee. We have a guarantee with God. When we accept God into our hearts, that no matter what happens, that can't be taken away. That we are, we've accepted God into our heart and God loves us so much that even sometimes when we mess up, God continues to love us. That's our guarantee. That's our warranty. Okay? So I just kind of want to talk to you about that this morning and, and let you know that you're loved and we're going to spend some time in prayer now, okay? Lord, I thank you so much for loving us unconditionally. Lord, I lift up these young people this morning. Lord, let them know that they are loved by you. Let them know that they're going to make mistakes, that, that they're going to mess up sometimes, but that's okay that you continue to love us anyway. Lord, I ask that you watch over them. Watch over the ones that couldn't be here this morning till we can meet together again. Thank you for placing them in our hearts and our lives. Let us as a church continue to help, help them grow into loving you more and understanding more about you. We just ask that you continue to show that love to each and every one of us. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Bless you.
So I'm going to do something that I have always wanted to do, and I haven't done it yet, but I have the opportunity. We're going to do a series sermon. We're going to do the next three weeks. We're going to talk about something that's going on. And I've, I wanted to start this morning with two words. Get started. It's kind of the foundational verse for this series that we're going to be doing, and it's the thrust of it. And let's look at the, the scripture this morning. It comes from John chapter 14, verse 12. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these. And believe it, it says greater. Things that Jesus says that we're going to do greater things than because he's going to the Father. That's so powerful. It's powerful that he's going to the Father and we're going to do greater things than he has done. But here's the dilemma. Here's the dilemma. The real issue is that most people don't believe the words of Jesus. They don't believe that God wants to do greater things through their life. They've settled for a mediocre life. They've settled for an average life. They've given up doing greater things. Matter of fact, some of us here today may even be feeling like I'm at church, but I don't have that desire. I don't have that desire to do greater. I remember when I was growing up, I wanted to be nothing more than the best, world's best basketball player. It didn't work out so much, so I went into insurance. Um, but we have dreams, right? We as kids, we talk to these young people and we talk about what they want to do for a living. What, what do you want to do? I want to be an astronaut. I'm going to go to the moon. I'm going to go travel all around the world. Well, I don't, I don't know where you want to go all over the world. That's what I want to do. I want to cure diseases. Which ones? A lot of them. You talk to them and they're dreaming big. They want to be missionaries. They want to be in eight countries all at the same time. But all of a sudden, when we grow up, when we start growing up, we start not dreaming as big. When we hit high school, we stop dreaming big, that we're limited in our dreaming because of what people may have said to us. We quit dreaming God-sized dreams. You know what happens? People stop believing. You can live greater. And I want to share with you a couple roadblocks this morning that it keeps us from living greater lives. And the number one is the craziness of life. We all know that. The craziness of life can keep us from living a greater life. It's a way of distracting us from living. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was going to meet uh, one of my clients at a restaurant, and I was telling him how to get to this restaurant. I said, you just go straight down this road, and when you get to this light, you turn right, and I'm right here, I'm waiting for you. We talked a few more minutes. As he got to that light, we kept talking, and what did he do? He went right through that light and kept going. He said, where are you at? And I go, I'm right here where I told you I was at. Did you turn right? And he goes, no, I didn't. Why was that? Because I was talking to him. I was distracting him, and he drove right by. And that's what happens to so many people today. That God has a turn for them. A turn to right into greatness. But we get distracted by problems. We get distracted by pain. We get distracted by busyness of life. And we miss that turn. Because it can. Life can be distracting. And God is saying, that I'm, not, I'm greater for you. I want to do more through you. I want to do greater, but, but you're missing it because of the craziness of life. So in number two, the roadblock is living a disconnected life. Disconnected living. People don't see what they're going currently doing won't get them where they want to go. And let me say that again. There are some people, they don't see what they're currently doing won't get them where they want to go. Now, they desire greater. They desire greater. They want to do greater on the inside of them. And they know that there's more for their life, but they can't quite put their finger on it. What's holding them back? They can't figure it out. What's keeping them from doing greater? Disconnected life. 
when you know that there's more than having a dream, but you can't put your finger on the roadblock. That's keeping you from living greater. People just can't see it. They just can't see their attitude as the roadblock that they're coming up against. They're spending their time in this roadblock. They're thinking how they're currently thinking about all these roadblocks. They can't see their friendship choices are roadblocks. Listen, you hang out with chickens, you're going to cluck. If you hang out with eagles, you're going to fly. Now, how many of you know that chickens or eagles don't take lessons from chickens? Some of you are hanging out with the wrong people. Some of us hang out with the wrong people. You're wondering you can't live greater. That's disconnected living. Number three, the roadblock is bad habits. We all have some of these. We have bad habits. You won't get to change. You, won't, you, you have bitterness or addictions, just laziness. Maybe you stay up too late and you can't function the next day. It's a bad habit, and it's a roadblock from you living greater. I threw the staying up too late because that's, that's me. I'll be the first to admit. The fourth roadblock is procrastination. One of the most difficult things about living greater is actually getting started. There's that word, getting started. At some point, you have to move from, from taking talking to action. You have to move from planning to pursuing you have to move from con contemplating to chasing. Understand this, church. Someday can be a disease. They will take your dreams to the grave with you someday. I'm going to get started someday. I'm going to do it someday. You got to move forward. You got to get started. There's those words again. Get started. Even your spiritual journey next week, you have to get started. Quit the delay. Stop procrastinating. Three areas getting started, living greater. And I want to talk to you about the life of Joseph. Now, we all know the story of Joseph. But in these three areas have impacted my life so much that I'm personally connected to these points. If you want to live greater, you've got to get started in three areas. Number one, get started dreaming. Get started dreaming. Let's look at Joseph's life in Genesis chapter 37, verse 5. It says, Joseph had a dream. Those four words. Joseph had a dream. They're very powerful. Joseph didn't have any, just any type of dream. He had a dream from God. For his life and friends, understand this. God had a dream for your life. God has a dream for your life. God has a dream for your marriage. God has a dream for your future marriage. God has a dream for your singleness. He has a dream for your children. He has a dream for your grandchildren. He has a dream for your career. God has a dream for your life. God created you with a purpose. You have to understand God has a dream for each and every one of us. And if you're going to live greater, it begins with God's dream in your life. It all starts with this dream. And some of you have to stop surviving and start dreaming again. You have to survive just to pay bills. You have to survive just to get through. You have to survive, but, but God has a dream for you. He created you with a purpose. Some of you have to start dreaming again. But we stop dreaming. You used to dream as a kid. You used to dream as a teenager into your 20s. We have to start dreaming again. Joseph had a dream. And number two is taking steps of faith. Taking steps of faith. Get started taking steps of faith. You have to move forward. You have to do something. You have to get started. If you're going to live greater. 
Let's look at Joseph, Genesis chapter 37, back to verse 5. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him for all the more. Now telling his brothers his dream probably wasn't the wisest thing that he did, but here's what I love. Here's what I love. I love the fact that Joseph did something. He did something. He took a step of faith. He didn't just have a dream from God and did nothing with it. He took a step of faith. He told his brothers. He began to act out his dream that God had given him. And then it was Pappins did. And if you're not too familiar with the story, which I'm sure you are, his brothers sold him into slavery, right? Sold him into slavery, and he was taken to a foreign land called Egypt. And he began to work in Potiphar's house. And even in a foreign land, he began to take steps of faith. He kept moving forward and chasing his dreams. Notice in Genesis that he was 17. Joseph had this dream when he was 17. That he was going to be a powerful leader. He was going to be an influential leader. That was the dream that he had. Now he finds himself in a foreign land working for Potiphar. But you know what he kept doing? He kept taking steps toward his dream. He started leading in Potiphar's house. He started leading right where he was, not where he wanted to be. And then he's leading part of this house and taking care of the house. Then Potiphar's wife, what does she do? She accuses him of rape. And he's thrown into prison for a crime he didn't commit. But here's what I want you to notice. Genesis chapter 39, verse 20 says, So the warden put Joseph in charge. Notice the steps of faith. All of those held in this prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done. Notice the steps of faith. Responsible right there in this prison. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph, and he gave him success in whatever he did. He did something. He got started. There it is again. He got started. He moved from, for God. Blessed. God was blessing him even in prison. Even when he was facing adversity, even when he was facing setbacks, Joseph kept taking steps forward. He kept taking steps toward his dreams. He kept chasing his dreams. He had a dream of being a powerful leader. And he did not wait for ideal circumstances. And that's what we do, right? So many times we wait. Well, it's not time. We have to wait till the time is perfect before we do anything. He got started right away, right where he was at in the middle of the prison. You see that, friends? If you're going to see your dream come true and you're going to live a greater life, you got to start taking steps of faith right now, right where you are. You've got to quit waiting for ideal circumstances. Take steps of faith right where you are, getting started. I still have big dreams for this church. We're not done at this church. This church is not done. We still have a ministry. We are going to take steps forward. We are going to go forward. We're going to take steps of faith. The First Baptist Church of Pontiac, Illinois is not done. Amen? There's dreams that God has laid on my heart for us to go for. To take more ground. To take down the devil. To kick him right in the face. And tell more people about Jesus Christ. We're taking steps of faith. We have to take steps toward our dream. Where you are. You might say, well, Pastor Jay, you don't understand what I'm going through. Take steps of faith. You don't know who hurt me. Welcome to life. Take steps of faith. You don't understand the problems that I have in my family. Welcome to family. Take steps of faith. You don't understand the struggles that I'm having at work. Take steps of faith. Everybody who lives greater takes a step of faith. 
You can't live greater unless you get started. Oh, there it is again. Get started. Unless you move forward. Unless you take steps of faith. Number one is getting dreaming again. Number two is taking steps of faith. But here's the third one. Living a generous life. Living a generous life. Joseph achieved his dreams because he lived a generous life. He lived to give, not to get. He lived to give, not to get. Winston Churchill says this, and I quote, We make a living by what we get. We make a life for what we give. And Joseph made a life by living generous. He lived greater because he lived to be a blessing to others. Not to get, but to give. As we go through and we connect the dots of his story, Joseph was thrown into the prison, and when he was in the prison, he was to take care of the prison, and he was getting elevated here at the prison like we talked about. He had responsibilities. He became a leader over the prison. He had responsibilities. He became a leader over the prison right underneath the warden. And as Joseph was in prison, he met a couple of guys, the baker and the chief cupbearer. And they were working for Potiphar, and they got thrown, or working for Pharaoh, they got thrown into prison. He had heard they had a dream. You know what Joseph could have done? He could have just dismissed these guys and said, I'm too busy taking care of the prison. I don't have time to fool with you guys. I'm in pain myself. I'm in a foreign land. I don't deserve to be here. I'm in a prison for a crime I didn't commit. I don't deserve it. He could have been bitter. He could have taken a selfish posture. But Joseph didn't live that way. He lived to be generous. And so he interpreted their dreams. And he said, listen to the chief cupbearer. You're going to get restored back to your position with Pharaoh. If you would, could you just remember me? I haven't committed a crime and I'm, I'm here and I don't deserve it to be here. And the chief cupbearer goes back to Pharaoh and he forgets all about Joseph. And a year or two later, Joseph is still in that prison. And all of a sudden, Pharaoh has a dream. And nobody knows how to interpret it. But the chief cupbearer remembers this guy. This guy named Joseph. This generous guy that took the time to, to interpret their dreams. And he told Pharaoh, and Pharaoh said, well, go get this Joseph fella and bring him up here. Joseph got cleaned up. Comes in front of Pharaoh. And I love what Joseph does. Most of us, what would we do? Most of us would say, hey, hey King, King, I, I mean, I'm in prison. I, I don't deserve to be here. Can you help me out? Can you get rid of, can you, can you get me out of here? But he doesn't do that. He listens to Pharaoh's dream, and he interpreted his dream. And here's the amazing part of the story. Pharaoh, who had never met Joseph, hears him interpret his dream sees this man living to give and not to get. And Joseph's generosity was the catalyst to him. Seeing his dream come to fruition, Joseph's willingness to be blessing to Pharaoh literally took him from the prison to the palace. And he finds himself second in charge of Egypt. Don't take for life for granted living generously. Living to be a blessing to people because you make it happen for others. You've got to live to give and not to get. You've got to be there and open-minded. You've got to be a blessing. That's exactly what happened to Joseph. Listen to what Pharaoh says to Joseph in Genesis chapter 41. It says then, Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there is no one so discerning and wise as you. You shall be in charge of my palace. And all my people are to submit to your orders. Only respect to the throne will I be greater. Joseph was in charge of Egypt, for Joseph was promoted to greater than everyone else in Egypt. Why? Because he lived a generous life. He propelled him into greater things. Verse 41 says, So Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt. And check this out. Check this out. 
This is so important, you understand, that right now when Joseph became second in charge of Egypt, the first thing that he did because he interpreted Pharaoh's dreams, the dream was there was going to be seven years of abundance in this land. There was going to be seven years of famine. We know this story, right? And now Joseph is large and he's in charge and it's important. He's controlling all the food supply. But you know what Joseph does? I'm not just living for me. I need to invest my time to interpret these dreams. Not only will I be a blessing with my time, but I want to be a blessing with my resources. I'm going to leverage these resources and take care of thousands of people. So he stored away the food during the seven good years. They could be a blessing to provide when a famine came. Joseph was a man who lived to give and not to get. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25 says, A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Here's what I've learned about generosity, friends. You and I will never live a generous life on accident. We never live an accident when it comes to our time. We don't live an accident when it's a generous life. Many of you serve your time. You give your time. You give your hearts. You don't do that by accident. It's on your calendar that you're going to be generous. We do it on purpose. I want to encourage you to live a life of generosity. To live to give and not just to get. I want you to hear my heart today. I want something for you today and not something from you. I want you to believe it with all your heart. I live this in my life because I believe generosity unlocks the doors for our dreams to come to pass. And when we make it happen for others, God will make it happen for us. There are many people in churches all around They never get started living generously. They just never get started. Well, there's those words again. Get started. They are never consistently generous. The doors were open to Joseph to experience his dreams because he lived generous. He lived to give, not to get. You just got to get started. Everybody who has done greater things have one thing in common. Here's the one thing. They got started. We have to get started as a church. Abraham left his home. He left his father and his mother and went to a land that God had never even shown him, right? Again, stories that you've heard all your life. He just got started. I think about Moses. Moses on the backside of Egypt, or on the desert for 40 years, and Moses just was said to go back to Egypt and led my people out of slavery, and Moses just got started. I think about Noah. Noah grabbed some wood and started to build an ark, and he got started. Nehemiah asked if he could get started to rebuild the walls of the people, and he went back to his homeland and got started. How about the 12 disciples? The 12 disciples, they left everything to follow Jesus, and they just got started. They started moving forward. Some of you here today, we have to get started. And we have to start dreaming again. We have to get started today. God has a dream for this church. God has a dream for your life. Get started moving forward. Get started by taking steps of faith. Quit waiting for ideal circumstances. Get started taking a step of faith. Get started living a generous life. Get started and watch what God will do through your life. Jesus said, My desire for you is that you would do greater things than I have done because I'm going to the Father. God wants to live greater and for you to chase your dreams. Part of that is also taking the steps. Taking the steps that we can do as a congregation. 
taking the steps that we come together on Sundays, that we pray for each other, that we can be there for each other. Are you ready to start dreaming again? Are you ready to take the leaps of faith? We're not alone. We're together. And part of that is we come to this table today. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And take and eat as representative of my body. Then he took the cup in the same token. It represented his blood. Drink this cup as representative of my blood in remembrance of me.
Father, we come to this table to give thanks. Every month we do this and we try not to take it for granted. Prepare our hearts for this service. Prepare our hearts for these elements. Prepare our hearts for your love. Amen. Let's share the bread. Take a moment. Close your eyes. Reflect on what God has done in your life. Let's share the cup together. Sounds like music in my ear. The 
Thank you for those voices. Thank you for the gift of music. Thank you for the gift of song. Thank you for this table that we just celebrated together. Lord, we take a moment now to give a portion back. We take a moment now and ask that these gifts and these tithes be blessed by you, that they can continue to tell people the good news, that they continue to do your ministry and your works through us, that we can get started, that we can dream, that we can be that light here and to people that we may never meet because it's your plan, not ours. And we pray this in your name. Amen. This moment is always so special to me that we take a moment and we pray for this church and we pray for the concerns of this church. We do need to lift up our sister Virginia Asper in prayers. I also was given a note uh, from Juanita James' family that they lost, uh, Juanita lost her sister this past week. We lift them up as well. We mentioned the nurses earlier. We mentioned how the stress that they have and also how God places people into our lives. Whether it's a nurse or it's a caregiver or if it's just someone that gives someone a love for that day or a smile or a hug, that is a ministry. Yeah, you may not be standing up here. You may not be reading, reading something at Sunday school, but we all have a ministry to do in this church. We all pray for each other. I love that opening How's Your Prayer Life logo when their hands are around the table together because I see that's the way that we are here. When that prayer chain goes out, we pray for each other. 
I was also told this morning that Mike Toon walked 20 feet. 20 feet. That's the power of God. That's the power of prayer. That's what we're able to do. That's what we're able to do as a church. That's the reason why we're not done. That's the reason why we have to get started. That's the reason why we have to dream. That's the reason why we have to take steps of faith. That's the reason why we have to be there for each other and love each other and hold each other and celebrate together. That's what family does. Yeah, we'll argue sometimes too. That's okay. That's what family does. But we love each other. Let me pray for you this morning. Lord, there's so many concerns that are not spoken about this morning. We lift up Virginia. We lift up Juanita's family. We give thanks for Mike. So many things that are on our hearts, but you know what they are. We give thanks for this church family as we turn, as we take that turn, let it be the turn of your plan for us. Let us get started, Lord. But also help us remember that we are not alone. That you've placed each and every one of us in each other's lives for a reason. That we don't have to stand alone. That we don't have to walk alone. That we have you and that we have others. We have people that care. We pray with our hearts. We pray with our whole hearts that you continue to bless this church. That you continue to work and do your ministries. That, that we are able to just be part of it. Lord, thanks for loving us. Thanks for caring for us. Even so, sometimes when we're not so lovable. You never turn your back on us. Let us learn to turn on, not turn our backs on others as well. Lord, watch over this church so we can meet together again. We pray this in your name. Amen.
with your eyes open, not on me, but on the cross. Allow God to come into your heart this week. Allow God to help you take the right turns. Allow God to help you get started. Take that step of faith. Believe and start dreaming again. Amen.